Welcome back to the channel, my name is Jack, I make videos about all things tech, and today I've got a few Sandmark updates for you. Just recently I posted a video showing all of their new updated lenses for the iPhone 14 Pro Max, a great set of lenses for adding new ways to shoot with your iPhone that allow you to make use of that big 48 megapixel sensor by mounting these over the main camera. But that video was missing something, the 1.55x anamorphic. I could only show you the 1.33 as the 1.55 just wasn't in stock at the time. And also their 60mm wide lens that I tested did let the set down a bit, it just wasn't as sharp as the rest of the lenses and you'd sometimes get this kind of hazing or glow around things and some of you commented and said that you were having the same issues too. But Sandmark has listened and they've now updated the 16mm wide and they've tweaked the design and now on the 14 Pro Max I've been really impressed when shooting with it. The quality and clarity is really pretty insane now. Plus they've now sent me the 1.55 anamorphic so I can show you that too and how it compares to the 1.33 and just how it can make your iPhone footage look so much more cinematic. These are some of my favourite lenses to shoot with. And not only that, they've also sent me their lens case, which comes included with all lens purchases and their brown leather case if you want more of a premium look. There are links to everything in the description and those links will get you 10% off your entire order automatically applied at the checkout. And those are affiliate links which do help support me and the channel if you do decide to pick these up. But this isn't a sponsored video, these are my genuine thoughts from using these and I think that the lenses pretty much speak for themselves when you see the image quality. And Sandmark does make cases and lenses for other versions of the iPhone. You can use the buy device drop down to find exactly what you need if you don't have a 14 Pro Max. This video is kind of a follow on from the first one, so I'll link to that below if you missed it. But first let's take a quick look at the cases and then we'll get into the lenses. So this is Sandmark's Pro case. This is the one that I've been showing you in all of these videos so far. It has the metal mounting plate on the back for the lenses, two holes on the side for attaching a wrist strap, and a ring of magnets in the back so it will work with any of your MagSafe accessories. The leather case follows largely in the same design, it still has the metal mount plate, the holes for the wrist strap attachment, the magnets in the back for MagSafe, and the wraparound design that covers the buttons on the side and the speakers on the bottom. But of course, this time in a leather finish. This is a full grain leather. It looks and feels really premium in the hand and it's a great option for anyone who wants that high-end look. It does come in a few colour options too, this is the brown one, but it also comes in black, navy and teal. And this is simply called the lens case, this is like a super slim version of the pro case, it's a lot more slimline, so much so that the lens mounts now protrude out of the mount plate to compensate for that thinness. This doesn't have anywhere to attach a wrist strap or have any magnets in the back, and on the sides and bottom there are cutouts for the buttons and speakers. But it's a great starter case that comes with all lens purchases, with the Pro and Leather cases there for anyone wanting MagSafe compatibility and more side protection. On to the lenses, this is Sandmark's 1.55x anamorphic, and here it is next to the 1.33. These lenses give you a super wide cinematic look by squeezing a wider image onto the camera sensor, leaving you with black bars at the top and bottom of the frame once the footage is de-squeezed. That's why they have these kind of cylindrical lenses that might look a bit strange if you've never seen lenses like this before. Here's some standard 16x9 footage shot on a 14 Pro Max. With the 1.33 anamorphic mounted, you can fit even more of the scene into the frame. And with the 1.55, it's even wider still. It's a pretty dramatic difference when compared with the standard iPhone video. Anamorphics are used quite a lot in cinema, they have a very distinct look with the blurring at the edges of the frame and the way that they curve and distort any straight lines, and it's pretty cool being able to get that look here on your phone, I just love the look of the footage. They're really fun to shoot with and they just make anything look way more cinematic. But they're probably most well known for their lens flares. Both the Sandmark Anamorphics give you these blue-green flares from any bright lights in the frame, and they look really cool and they just add something to the footage that makes it look a lot more interesting and stand out. It kind of has a futuristic sci-fi feel. Normally flaring is something that you don't want with lenses, it's something you want to try and avoid, but here they just add such a nice aesthetic and I'm really hoping that Sandmark will make some gold flare versions in the future too for a bit more of a neutral look. When mounting these you want to make sure that they're orientated properly with the glass curving from left to right, but there is a line on the case and on the lenses to help you out. The raw footage from Anamorphics is squashed and squeezed, so I shot this in the legacy version of Filmic Pro which has options in the hardware menu to select an anamorphic factor, which then automatically de-squeezes the footage in the viewfinder 
and on the saved video files for you. You can also do this in the Moment app, which is a one-time purchase if you don't want to subscribe to Filmic Pro, and I will link to both in the description. Comment below if there's any camera apps that you use that you'd recommend, as I'm always keen to try shooting with some new apps. And if you're wondering how I got such smooth footage when walking and panning, I had my phone mounted on this. This is the Insta360 Flow. It's a super compact gimbal for your phone. It's really easy to use and it keeps everything nice and steady. I've recently made a video all about it, so I'll link to that below as well if you want to check it out. So this is the 60mm wide that I showed you in my last Sandmark video. It wasn't as sharp as the other lenses in the collection, which was a bit disappointing. And some of you commented and said that you had found the same, so thanks for doing that as I wasn't sure if it was just my lens. But now they've tweaked the design and released a newer version. They both look quite similar at first, but there are some visual differences that let you tell them apart. Firstly, this newer version is ever so slightly bigger than the original, but the easiest way to tell them apart is when you flip them over, this newer version has a much larger opening on the back of the lens. And presumably there are some changes with the lens glass too, as this newer version has so much more clarity than the original. Here's an example from both versions, and at first glance they both look very similar, but if we crop into these 48 megapixel stills, the original lens is just a bit of a blurry mess. You can barely make out any detail on any of the Canon gear on the shelf, versus the updated lens where everything is just perfectly sharp. You can see all the texture and actually read the text on the side of the Canon lenses. It's so much better now. Again, here's another example, this time outdoors. Cropping into the original wide, it just looks soft and a bit muddy. But on the new version, you can see all of that texture in the wood grain, even the fine threads of spider silk. It's really a massive improvement. And it means that you can take full advantage of that 48 megapixel sensor on the 14 Pro Max and take even wider shots with this than you can with the main camera on its own. And with the improved sharpness, you can crop in and reframe while still keeping a ton of detail. Just look at this shot here of the pine cone, it's pretty incredible. And you get this really nice shallow depth of field from that big sensor. The 16mm wide sits just between the main camera and the ultra wide, but it is so much sharper than that ultra wide, which is only 12 megapixels. It's great for big landscape shots, wide lenses can be used to make something look bigger or further away, so you can get a bit creative with them. And I really have just been so impressed by the new quality of the stills. You can of course use this for video too. The main camera on the iPhone has the best low light performance, so footage shot with this will look even better than that from the ultra wide. It's also great for vlogging with, the extra wideness makes it really easy to film yourself with the back camera and keep yourself within the frame when you can't see the screen. And now that Sandmark has fixed that softness with this new version, I can definitely recommend that you pick it up if you're looking for a wide lens for your iPhone. All of Sandmark's lenses come with a zip-up carry bag, a pouch, and front and rear lens caps, which is really nice to keep things protected. Plus they come with a clip mount if they don't make a case for your phone. Go check out my last video showing examples from all of the lenses if you haven't already. It's a great set for pretty much every shooting condition with macro lenses for super up close photography. These capture so much tiny detail, I love shooting with them. A tele lens for getting even closer to a subject off in the distance. A fisheye for that action camera look and a massive 210 degree field of view. Anamorphix for widescreen cinematic video with lens flares. And of course, this new updated wide for fitting more into the frame and playing with perspective. The complete set lets you shoot in whole new ways and just fully take advantage of the extra resolution from that 48 megapixel main camera. I'll link to everything in the description and remember those links give you 10% off your entire order automatically at the checkout. If this video helped you out, you can let me know by hitting the like button. Drop a comment below if you've got any questions. And if you want to see more tech videos from me, you can hit subscribe and the bell. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.